There's a very easy trick that you can use to predict the weather. Come take a walk with your boy and let me show you how you can be Nostradamus. Ill Matt. Let go! Boom! A major key to predicting weather is just understanding what's happening with the Earth's atmosphere and familiarizing yourself with the terms that we covered in the previous video, like temperature, dew point, lapse rate, and adiabatic cooling. If you familiarize and you got that on lock, you can predict pretty much anything that's going to pop off in this atmosphere right here. If you haven't seen that video, I highly encourage you to watch that video, the must-know weather terms. There'll be a link to that thing at the end of this video so you can familiarize yourself with that more. But once you know those terms, backwards, forwards, and sideways, hey, you can run pretty much anything. Let's go! Turn off the lights. Hey, we back off in that thing, of course, talking about what are some of those predictors to help you predict weather in addition to understanding the difference between stable air and unstable air. One key factor you want to know about weather, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. All weather is caused by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. The world that we live in just does not heat evenly. Think about if you put something into the oven and then you pull it out and the edges are nice and crispy. It's been heating real hot, but the middle was real soft in whatever dish you were preparing. It didn't heat evenly. Sometimes it happens like that when you're cooking, but just think about the sun cooking on the earth. It's not going to heat everything evenly. Some areas like dry areas, open areas are going to heat a lot faster and a lot hotter than areas that are shaded. You know, think about water versus land. It's going to heat, it's not going to heat evenly. It's going to heat at different rates. That's the one of the most key factors you want to understand. There's also a second key factor that you need to know about weather. For that second key factor, there's going to be a link at the end of this video talking about the two most important things that you must understand about weather. Back to that temperature. Since you know that temperature, that sun shining nice and bright, we got our smiley face doing its thing, that the uneven heating of the Earth's surface is going to impact and affect everything that we know weather-wise. Boom! We got that knowledge in our head and we can work with that. So let's just say we had the sun. It was beaming down. It was doing this thing. Let's go over to the left-hand side here. And let's just say the temperature was 18 degrees Celsius with a dew point of 15 degrees Celsius. Again, think about that relationship between the temperature and the dew point. There will be a link to a video covering that in great detail at the end of this video. You understand that you don't want those numbers to be close because when they're close, it can be low vis, fog, cloudy kind of situation. Something is starting to build. You like your temperature and your dew point to be separated. That's a good day for you. That's nice visibility. Everything is going good. So let's just say the uneven heating of the Earth's surface on this particular day gave us 18 degrees Celsius temperature. 15 degrees on the dew point. Okay, cool. We fine. Got ourselves up some nice vids. But of course, it started to heat a little bit of an area right here. And that's in that in that little like a little patch of grass, a little some land that was happening right there. Starts to heat at that 18 degrees. And of course, as we very well know, heat rises. If you ever been in a two, three, four, five story building and you were on the top floor and it was extremely hot, you're like, man, it's hot in here. And you didn't do anything. But you just ran downstairs, and when you got to the bottom level, you realized it was cooler. You didn't put the fan on, the AC on, or anything. Why is that? That's an example of heat rising. No matter where we are on this earth, heat will always rise. So if you understand that principle, then you understand when the sun starts heating that land down there and it's 18 degrees Celsius, it's going to start to rise, especially if the temperature of standard temperature is only 15 degrees. So the standard temperature is only 15 degrees because you know that standard temperature is 15 degrees Celsius and the sun is heated up to 18 degrees. That heat, that heated area is going to start to rise. That atmosphere in that area is going to start to rise. That air in that area is going to start to rise. And every thousand feet that it goes up because of adiabatic cooling is going to cool at a predictable rate. It's going to cool at the rate of three degrees per thousand feet. That's the main thing you got to remember. That's why you got to cover those terms that's going to be noted in that previous video. Must know terms. So if you know adiabatic cooling, you know everything's going to cool and rise up at a predictable rate of three degrees per thousand feet. It's going to go from 18 to a thousand feet up. Now all of a sudden, it's going, that air is going to be 15 degrees Celsius with a dew point of 15. What happens do we know about from the previous video when temperature and dew point meet each other? That of course, is when fall and cloudiness and moisture that we can see, visualize, starts to form. 
So that now all of a sudden, when that air starts to rise into the air and the dew point and temperature meet, they both at 15 degrees. Now we're going to start to see that cloud form in the air. But 15 degrees is still hotter than the standard pressure at that time, which is only 13 degrees because the standard pressure scale goes up on that lapse rate that we talked about, goes up at only two degrees per thousand feet. So that 15 degrees is still going to be higher. So what's going to happen there? It's going to rise again. That air is going to continue to go up and it's going to go up and it's going to lose again another three degrees. And it's going to be at 12 degrees while the standard's at 11. So it's still hotter. So it's going to go up again to nine degrees. And then finally, that's when it's matching. That's what you're looking for. When does the stand the lapse rate, if it's a standard lapse rate, when does the degree match exactly what's happening with the temperature of the air as it continuously go up? Once it match matches, that's kind of when it's going to top off. And now you have yourself a nice little cloud layer that has formed in the atmosphere in those standard kind of lapse rate kind of conditions. And that's when you will kind of go outside and it may be a clear, visible kind of day, but you may see a few cumulus clouds here and there just popping off. You know, nothing too crazy, but you just may see a little bit of that. That's exactly what has happened. If that moisture has gotten to the air, it has risen a little bit, build up a little bit, but it kind of topped off at a nice point where that standard um, temperature on that lapse rate met, met up with what was happening in the atmosphere and it kind of just leveled off. So topping off and matching, that's a beautiful thing. A boom! So let's talk about an example where it doesn't match up and that's when you can get unstable air and some significant thunderstorms. This is what you have to be aware of, particularly when you're trying to predict weather. So just check it out. Let's go on my right hand side here. We got the same scenario. Let's start with the same exact thing. Let's just say we got our same temperature and dew point, 18 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius on the dew point. So boom, we in the same area that we were in the previous example. The difference is the lapse rate. You know how that lapse rate, it can be standard. The standard lapse rate is every thousand feet, the degree is going, should, should dec decrease two degrees. So it should go from 15 degrees to 13, to 11, to nine, to seven, to five, so on and so forth. That's a standard lapse rate. But obviously, as we know, all things aren't always standard. Sometimes those lapse rates, those temperature as you rise up and as you go up, can change drastically. It can drop off the cliff in terms of the temperature declining. When you think about lapse rate, all it is is as air goes up, it is decreasing in temperature. What is the rate that is decreasing? That's the lapse rate. And it can be a standard lapse rate where it's losing two degrees, but it can also be one where it may be losing three, four, five degrees every thousand feet. So let's just say this example here, there was a non-standard lapse rate and it went from 15 degrees to 11 degrees, so it lost four degrees, then seven degrees, then two degrees, then minus one, and then minus three. So it's, it's moving fast and it's losing more than just the standard two degrees every thousand feet. So we started off in the exact same place, but let's see the impact that non-standard lapse rate is gonna have on temperature and dew point. So immediately, if we start off at 18 degrees, we know again, adiabatic cooling. Everything is gonna naturally cool at a predictable rate of three degrees as it goes up that air. So that air goes up, particularly when it's being lifted and forced it up because of course the heating of the earth's surface. So it heats up there at a thousand feet and it goes to 15. It's automatically at 15 degrees and uh, temperature and a 15 degree dew point. So again, boom, our cloud uh, is that fogginess, that fogginess and that cloud is going to start to form. That vapor, it's going to be visible to the, to the naked eye already at a thousand feet up. So, okay, and 15 degrees is way hotter than the 11 degrees that's happening on the lapse rate. So it's going to continue to rise. So it's going to go to 12 degrees, but 12 degrees is hotter than seven. So it's going to climb again to nine. Nine is hotter than two. It's going to keep climbing. Six, six is hotter than negative one. It's going to keep climbing. Three, three is hotter than negative three. It's going to keep climbing. And now you see what's happening. You got this endless cycle where it's just going to keep going up, 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 up. And then eventually it'll top off somewhere, but you're looking at a huge thunderstorm. That's how a huge thunderstorm can form and how a huge significant thunderous cloud can form simply because the lapse rate is never matching the body of air. It never matches at a, re at a reasonable point here where it just tops off. It just keeps building and building and building and building and growing. And as those clouds keep building and growing, thunderstorms are getting ready to happen. <laughs> Boom! 
So to get that unstable air, you had to have those three major ingredients. Just think about you making your favorite dish. You got to have all the ingredients to make it nice and beautiful. So we had that uplifting action. The uplifting action of the air, lifted into the air, was coming from the sun. The sun was heating up the surface to a certain temperature, past standard temperature. It was heating up at 18 degrees. That caused that heat, that air to rise because heat make things rise. So that's our lifting action that was happening. That's ingredient number one. Most importantly, it had that non-stable lapse rate. Standard is just supposed to, as it goes up, all air as it goes up is gonna cool, but instead of cooling at the natural two degrees per thousand feet, it was cooling the first thousand feet of four degrees, and then another four degrees, and then five degrees. So it was just all over the place. So that non-standard lapse rate of losing more than two degrees, that's also was playing a major factor. And then we, of course, know that warm air carries a lot more moisture than colder air. So those water vapors in there, so you got the moisture, you got the lifting action, you got that unstable, non-standard lapse rate. You know what you're getting ready to have? A major thunderstorm. <laughs> Boom! So let's talk about our third and final example, stable air. And what are some of the differences that makes it stable versus unstable, which we just previously reviewed. So we still have a lot of the same key elements. You still got the sun popping off, it's heating up the ground at the exact same temperature. So we're using the exact same temperature and dew point for all of these examples. So it's 18 degrees Celsius on the temperature, 15 degrees on the dew point. But look at our elapsed rate. Look what's happening there. It's not standard because it's not going, we're not losing two degrees of Celsius every thousand feet. It's going from 15 to 14 to 12 to 11. But also, we're not losing the two degrees, but we're not dropping drastically either, losing four and five degrees either. It's very small little increments that is kind of like increase, decreasing as it goes up. With that being said, let's just say that, again, adiabatic cooling started at 18 degrees. It goes up 1,000 feet. It's 15 degrees. So it'll be 15 degrees right there. It's still warmer than the 14 degrees. So let's just say it goes up one more, goes to 12 degrees Celsius, and that's where it tops off. And that just remaining a nice little small cloud layer that sits over, but nothing too dangerous. That, of course, is stable air. What makes it stable? What are the biggest distincting characteristics in this example, in this scenario? The lapse rate. The lapse rate. It wasn't your standard lapse rate, but it wasn't so unstable that it was losing massive degrees of temperature every thousand feet either. It was very incremental and very small, and that caused it to top off relatively quickly. Boom! In the stable air situation, you end up with a nice little thin layer of maybe clouds or fog, and that'll be the end of that, but everything else will be cool and it won't be continue to build upon itself. The biggest thing is if things continue to build and grow on themselves like in an unstable situation, that can cause problems and thunderstorms along the way in very challenging conditions to fly in. Let go. Hey, and that is how you can predict if a thunderstorm is getting ready to pop off. Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. Turn those bell notifications on. I am Donovan Matisse. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free and fun videos to learn everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing one time. Love you one time. Subscribe to this channel.